Moses Waymer with Life on Fire. Man, I hope you're burning. I hope you're alive and I hope you're on fire. Man, I am excited today. I'm at my home church, Outreach Church. I love that place. I love the pastor, Roy Giese and Patty Giese. Man, they let me preach it up all the time at this church. I absolutely love it. I want to encourage you today, man, to stay on fire. But man, God told me something in this preach. He said, hey, read your Bible every day pray and preach the gospel every day. So I even had shirts made of it, man. But I'm telling you, if you'll do those three things in your life, if you'll read your Bible, if you'll pray and preach the gospel every day, I'm telling you, you will live a life on fire. It is the recipe for revival. I want to encourage you today. Watch this episode. I hope you're blessed. In Jesus' name, here we go. Holy Ghost. Amen. So I, um, I'm just coming out of Song of Solomon first to start off Solomon 1.1, 1, 1, and it talks about uh, this beautiful passage. I want to encourage you, man. Something that me and Jasmine was able to do before she went on to be with Jesus was every day we began to read the Bible together. And now all, we just challenged our, our marriage five minutes. It wasn't like, you know, something like wild, like an, an hour. Even though we, we met with Jesus on our own, we met together and we began to read the Bible the, the one book we did read, and we read it a lot, was Song of Solomon. And man, it was powerful. It, it enhanced our marriage. It blessed us. So I want to challenge any couple in here, any married couple, any couple looking to get married. I want to challenge you to read. I want to challenge everybody. Read your Bible. Just read your Bible. And, uh, but, but do read it together. But listen, I want to tell you, it says, a beautiful passage out of Song of Solomon 1.1. 1, 1. It says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. God kisses, right? Yeah. And then it says, for your love is better than wine. I truly believe in this hour that we're living in. God, like Roy said, is drawing people back to Jesus, to the fundamental things, the truth, which is Jesus Christ. It's no longer us. It's Christ in us. He is the beautiful one. He is the magnificent one. He is the king of glory. The king is coming. Matthew chapter 22 says that the kingdom of God is comparable to a king, uh, a king who, who, who made a, a great wedding feast for his son. Right? And he sends out servants. He sends them out. Hey, go invite everybody that I know. So he sends out servants. And, and, and it's to... And one thing that God was speaking to me is this to people. Like, how many of you have gotten wedding invitations to people you don't know? Not many, right? Well, maybe one or two. But, but listen, I've never gotten wedding invitations for anybody I don't know. So I believe God sends out these invitations to us as the church. And you'll see as this unfolds as I get around to it of what I'm talking about. But God, in this parable, is sending out his servants, sending out invitations for people to come. There's a great feast. A great banquet. A wedding feast is about to happen. There's a, a great marriage. Is about to take place guys. So these servants go out in the name of the king. And they go and say hey it's time to come. But guess what everybody says. Everybody in this passage in Matthew chapter 22. Begins to say hey I'm busy. I'm doing this. I got this going on. I got that going on. I got this going on. And so his servants come back and they say hey Lord. Everybody's busy. And, he got, and, and it says that he kind of gets frustrated. And he sends the servants back out again. And they come back and they say nobody will come. And some of them got beat. Some of them killed. They killed some of the servants. And then he sends this. He says, all right, well, then go out into the highways and byways. Go out into the, to the roads and to the ends and to the ends of the earth. And invite everyone to come in. And so people began to come in. But guys, what I want to say is like there's, there's something on the church right now that we, we, we need to make sure that we're not busy. We need to make sure because in uh, Matthew chapter 7, he begins to say, many, many will call me Lord, Lord. Many, many will call me Lord. But that just doesn't mean that you're going to get into heaven, guys. I just want to read that real quick because, man, it's so powerful. It's changed my life. And uh, Matthew chapter 7. And so guys, as we join, uh, go on this journey together, uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And on that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and many, uh, many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. 
And then it says in verse 21, everyone then who hears the words of mine and does them will be likened to a wise man. Who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be likened to a foolish man. Who built his house on sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell. And it says, and great was its fall. Great was its fall. Guys, I want to tell you, God is calling us to be built to build our houses, our lives on the rock in this hour. Everything else is seeking sand. And guys, when the floods come, just like we know in the past that we've experienced in our own lives, when temptations come, storms have come into our lives, we've swayed and we fell. We've fallen at times. We got beaten up and battered because the reality is, is we weren't built on Jesus. And guys, I'm telling you, God is releasing a cry in this hour saying, wake up, church. Wake up, my beautiful bride. Because, hey, like, it's time for you to shine. You are the light of the world. You are a city on top of a hill. You're called to carry my fire, my passion. You're called, you're called to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to preach the gospel. But listen, guys, it's time. God is calling us. And he's saying, no longer build your life. On sinking sand. But it's time to build on the rock. The rock of ages. Jesus is the rock. Guys, I'm telling you, we must build our life on the rock. Hey guys, man, I hope you're enjoying this episode. I hope you get a couple laughs out of it too. I know that I love to have fun as I'm preaching, but I'm very serious, man. God has called us to have uh, a life of fire, man. And I just want to let you know today that God absolutely loves you. I want you to stay tuned. We're about to go to commercial, but I want to pray for you as we get back. Bless you today in Jesus' name. This is Wayman Dotson, guys, with Life on Fire. If you enjoyed our show today, I want to encourage you to reach out to our ministry, witness to the nations, and invite us to your church. Man, we want to take people out in the streets. We want to come and do crusades. We want to do whatever God is putting on your heart, guys. We just are filled with the contagious joy of Jesus, and we are filled with the fire of God. Guys, we would love to come to your church, to your city, to your nation, wherever you're at. Please Please reach out to us on social media or through email. Man, we are super pumped about what God is doing in this hour. So I want to encourage you today, wherever you're at, please reach out to us if you're interested in inviting us. We would love to come and bless your church, bless your city, and take people out into the streets and preach the radical goodness of God to your city. Jesus said this. Jesus said, who do they say that I am, Peter? Who do they say that I am? And he said, well, some call you John the Baptist. Some call you this person. Some call you that person. But he said, no, Peter, who do you say that I am? And he says, Lord, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Peter, upon that rock, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Guys, I'm telling you, it's the revelation of Christ in this hour. Christ is king, the king of glory. Amen. He's the rock of ages. And I just want to declare to you today, build your life upon him. This is not to condemn you. I love you. But I know that God has called you to burn. He's called you to blaze. To be full of the oil. That your lamp would be burning. It says and be filled with oil. That you would not. Your flame would not go out. God, he, God is calling us to burn in this hour. Not just to look like we're religious. God is calling us to intimacy. That's what burns that fire. That's that fire that burns that oil. The presence in him. And so guys I want to tell you three things that God showed me. And I, and I know it's a little funny. But he talks to me like that. And he says. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Pray and preach the gospel every day. 
I felt like God told me that. And I want to encourage you guys. Read your Bible. God is calling us back just to fundamental truths, guys. Like Roy said, so many times we've swayed after all these things in the church and we've been led. But it's super simple. It's super simple gospel. Read your Bible, pray, and preach the gospel every day. Guys, I want to tell you this. In the old times, fire was so valuable. It was so valuable because it didn't have lighters. You didn't have electricity. So there was always, there was this art to learning a craft, a craftsman, how to be a fire carrier. You had to carry the fire and protect it. You had to carry it, keep tinder there so it could burn day and night. So it would keep going. It, even you would carry, you'd put embers in there and go. If you had to move, you had to walk or you had to go here or there. You would have to carry it and put tenders in it and blow in it to keep that fire going, guys. And I'm telling you, God is calling us to keep that fire. He's trying to teach us how to learn to carry the fire. I'm serious. God is calling us to learn to carry, to be a lamp burning. Right now, the season that we're in, God is saying, I want to light you up and send you out. God is calling us to walk in authority. He's calling us not just to be history people. To talk about how the history was in the Bible. He's calling us to move in authority. To pray for the sick. To heal the sick. To preach the gospel guys. And I just want to tell you like God loves you. Guys I'm telling you everywhere. Everywhere I go. God's telling me to stand up and preach the gospel. I know it's wild. But the devil doesn't tell me to do that. Right. (laughs) So I mean I'm on airplanes. And God, I got children on my hips. And literally. (laughs) Literally, like, screaming, and then I get them calm, and then God's like, tell them about me. And I'm like, I'm sitting there in the back, and I'm like, right now? And he's like, yep, right now. So then God's calling me, and I just declare, hey, guys, hey, in in an airplane, in an airplane. And, And, you know, it just had landed. Everybody's getting their luggage down. And I said, hey! Everybody looks back. What's going on? You know, I don't know what they think, but they look back anyway. And I just declare the good news. Hey, you're completely loved. And I ask them, have you heard the good news? People are like, wow, what good news? You're amazing. And God absolutely loves you. Guys, it's super simple. Like, like people just need to know that they're loved, guys. That's the truth. Even yesterday, the day before, everywhere we go, we are the light of the world. It's not, just, it's not just like when we go on outreach. Now, I'm not knocking that. That's what we do. We do go out as a team. But it's everywhere we go. Amen. Amen. And guys, I want to I draw you in. I, wanna, I know that God is drawing people, but I want to encourage you to be drawn into his presence. Like, read your Bible. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's so powerful. When you speak the word, the word created the world, guys. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Come on. Why wouldn't we want to read the word if we know it's God? Come on. It's like fire in my bones. Come on. Amen. And then, you know, we need to pray. Read your Bible. Pray. Intercede. Many people say, hey, the, uh, praying's hard is boring. Well, you're not praying like I am. I promise you, man. We see things happen. Like, man, you get in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, build yourself up in, the most, in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray. Pray. Jesus says, if you pray and believe or receive, or believe that you received it, it shall be done. Come on. We would be, if we really believe that, we would be praying. That's why I pray all the time. Man, it changes the world. Elijah was a man like us. But it's the fervent prayer of a righteous man. The Bible says, availeth much. Elijah's prayers changed the nation. One man's prayers, guys, changed the nation. Read the Bible. Pray. And declare the gospel. Declare the fire of God. The good news. It's good news, guys. It's not bad news. Like the world is filled with... Of bad news. People absolutely love it. Man, I'm telling you, every restaurant I go to, I declare the gospel. And they absolutely love to hear that they're loved. Who's going to get angry because you love them? 
Who's going to get angry that you've forgiven them? Guys, it's the truth. The truth shall set you free. Guys, I'm telling you, you want to be set on fire? Share the gospel. See people saved. See people set free. Come on, we had so many people getting saved. And, and Clemson, Dylan had a group. I was over here. Another guy was over there. And I was like, Dylan, can they hear you? And everybody's like, no. And but I mean, literally people were getting saved, man. It's, it's powerful, man. It's lives being changed. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to preach the gospel. Guys, I believe, I believe we're going to see revival in every sphere of society. I've even been praying for the solicitor's office. I've been praying, God, not that they're bad people, but that even in those areas of society, what, there, what revival would come. Courthouses, revival, judges in his chambers praying. Come on, come on. Uh, the county councilmen are praying right now. Come on, that we would dare to believe, God, that, that we would cry out and ask God to shake our city like never before. That we would hear testimonies of people being revived and saved and our whole city gathering. Like, what if we dared to believe for our whole city to come together in unity and believe for God to move upon our city? Guys, I'm telling you, it's possible. All things are possible in God. I'm telling you. God is looking for that man or that woman in this hour who will carry that fire, who will value it, who will value Jesus. See, it's no longer you and I. We're no longer slaves to sin, guys. We're slaves to righteousness. Come on, right? That's good news, right? Who, who of us are set free in here? The Bible says who the Son sets free, we're free indeed. Amen? Guys, this is the truth. When Jesus was crucified on Calvary, our old nature, our sinful nature... Was crucified on Calvary. So we don't need to sin anymore. We don't need to be addicted anymore. Because Jesus. We were crucified with Christ on Calvary. The old sinful nature. And then it was buried in baptism with him. It says. This is Romans chapter 6. And then it says in Romans chapter 6. That we were raised in his likeness. See you and I. Were, are created in Christ. For good works. And I just declare that over you. You're not created for bad things, guys. You, like, what I want to say is you're a new creation. You're a new being. Your old man died. You're a new man. Your sickness died. Your sin died. Your addiction died. Come on. Now, for real, like, I mean, when that thing hit me, it's still hitting me, right? I'm still getting freedom all the time because I just constantly quote. When anything tries to come at me like temptation or something, I just remind the devil. I remind the devil what Jesus did. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Come on. I'm reminded. Jesus died for it. Guys, I'm telling you, kings and priests, a royal priesthood. Jesus died so that you would rule and reign. Jesus died so that you would rule. You have weapons that are mighty in God to pull down every stronghold. Love is a weapon. Joy is a weapon. Amen. Listen, there's no reason for you to be angry anymore. Listen, God set me free from anger. Joy. On airplanes. Listen, when kids are screaming. Guys, I went to Hawaii eight hours almost on an airplane with children. Joy. No, I'm serious. Joy. Listen, we don't, Jesus died, that old man, that anger man, that angry man, that angry woman died on Calvary. The Bible says anger does not work the righteousness of God. Woo, we are free from anger. So next time he tries to come on you, you remind the devil, you're free. You don't have, see, I used to think I had to get angry. I had to say something to Roy. I, you know, or, no, I'm just giving an example that like, I have to do this. Like if you say something to me, I have to do that. I mean, that's the way our world works, right? In a sense. But the reality is, is the weapons that I carry now are mighty in God to pull down strong. Your marriages, man, use love. Use that weapon. Use joy. Use kindness. See guys, Romans chapter two, verse four says the kindness of God leads us to repentance. That word lead, it means drive. 
his, his, his kindness drives us right into him. That's why I'm here today. That's why you're here today. Because over and over and over, we've all messed up. And guess what? He kept loving us. That's why we've submitted our life to him. Hey guys, it's Wayman with Life on Fire today, man. I absolutely love you. I want to let you know that you are beautiful, you are special, and that God absolutely loves you. Man, in this episode, it was awesome. God literally told me those three things. Read your Bible, pray, and preach the gospel every day. I was so empowered and excited about God speaking to me. I felt like he told me to put it on shirts, so I actually put it on a few t-shirts, and you may see me uh, here and there on the episodes wearing that shirt. Guys, I want to encourage you. That is a foundation. I believe God has spoken in my life, a template, a foundation to build in our life, and I want to share a scripture with you that means a lot to me. It's out of Proverbs chapter 24. It says, through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches guys I want to encourage you today man I was just building something at my house a a pool house and uh, the guys that were going to do the construction they actually came out and they they brought all the material out and they laid it in front of my house and I went out there and looked at it. See, I've never really been a construction guy or a construction person. So I looked at, man, look at all these uh, uh, these materials. All of it is, is here to build the house. And then the next day they came and brought all their tools and they set them inside the fence uh, where they were gonna build the house. And I remember looking at the materials and the tools. Man, and I was reminded by the scripture that it takes wisdom to build a house. Guys, I want to encourage you today. One of the greatest ways to begin to build your life upon Jesus is to read the Bible, is to pray and preach the gospel every day. I promise you these are these are huge things that you need to implement in your life. They're pillars that need to stand strong in your life. If there's ever been a time in my life where I began to backslid, it was because I, because I swayed in one of these areas. And I want to promise you, if there's ever been a time that I've really stayed on fire for God, and that's been a lot of my life in Christ, it's been because I've never swayed in these topics. No matter if I woke up sick, no matter if I went through a trial, a storm, a death in my family, I would implement these things and I would not waver. And because of that, I truly believe the intimacy and the pillars that that builds, the structure that it builds through wisdom and building a a structure in uh, my house because we are living temples. We house the spirit of the living God. And the reality is, man, if we do not value what we carry, nobody else will. But the reality is this, right? The reality is this, that we have the most powerful thing that is in all of creation, and that is God in us. Emmanuel, God in us. Man, Christ in us, the hope of glory. But Jesus said, it's best that I go because I'm going to send the comforter, the paracletus. He will come upon you, and you shall receive power, dutimus power, man, to be a witness. So guys, I want to encourage you, read your Bible, pray, and preach the gospel every day. Well, you said, wait a minute, while I do those first two, I want to ask you, are you doing the last one? Because if you look at it like this, have you ever seen a stream, or or excuse me, have you ever seen a pond, right, that had no flow? A, A body of water that has no flow in it, no outgoing stream, no movement in the water, guess what happens? It begins to get stinky. It begins to decay. Things begin to grow. And and algae and all these different things begin to grow because there's no flow. And, And it begins to rot. And I want to encourage you in this hour, maybe you've been reading your Bible. Maybe you've been praying, but you've been neglecting the preaching or the evangelizing. I want to tell you, God put a river in us. The Bible says, out of our belly, living waters are supposed to flow. Like we have life that's supposed to flow from us. But unfortunately, a lot of us have never been trained or been taught that we are supposed to flow outside of the building. But the reality is, is like if you go to the book of Acts or to the Gospels, to the life of Jesus, Jesus did preach in a temple, but most of the ministry done in the Bible is outside of a building and we got to get back to that we got to get back to the acts of the apostles we got to get back to living out the gospel never turning it off not just on at church no we're on all the time restaurants airplanes everywhere we go 
That's why we must read the Bible, uh, pray, and preach the gospel every day. Man, it's so important for these things. And I promise you, and I encourage you, if you will do these three, three things, and I believe that you're watching this show, and I believe that God is speaking to your heart, I believe that you're desirous to do these things. Implement these things in your life. I do it every morning. Every morning I wake up early and I began to read my Bible. I began to pray and I began to get ready to go out in the day and evangelize or preach the gospel wherever I'm going. And listen, you may not be like me and you may not be called to necessarily preach uh, at restaurants. Uh, I want to tell you, hey, but you're called to evangelize. You can share one-on-one. -on -one. You can do this or that. You can pay for somebody's meal and tell them simply that God loves them. A lot of times that's what I do. I just pay for meals or I'll stand up and say, hey, Hey everybody, God absolutely loves you. But guys, I want to encourage you. You cannot burn out when you're with Jesus because he is the fireman. Just like Peter began to sink uh, as he walked on water, uh, Jesus reached down and picked him up. I promise you when you're with Jesus, you will not sink. I promise you when you're with Jesus, like the two men that walked with him as he was resurrected, they said, who is this man? Because I could feel burning in my heart from his words. I promise you when you're with Jesus, your heart will burn. When you spend time with Jesus in intimacy, your heart will burn and you will have to let it out. So guys, I want to encourage you today. Father, I pray for fresh fire. I pray fresh anointing. I pray you would put hunger in everyone's heart that watches this today to read their Bibles, to get a hunger for prayer and get a hunger to preach the gospel and evangelize among the nations. God, I pray the power of your spirit, the man Jesus Christ in each and every person to read your Bible, to pray and preach the gospel every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless you in Jesus' name. Hey guys, I'm Wayman with Life on fire. I want to encourage you to stay on fire and guard the fire of God in your life with all costs. Don't bow down to anything. Stay on fire. I want to let you know before we end today, God absolutely loves you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you.